Hey everyone, this is our first of the commentary videos for the Voice of God book. I hope that the book has been fruitful for you so far. We've got seven or eight of these commentary videos that we're going to be using throughout the book, really just to give extra commentary, extra insight, articulate a few of the concepts a little more thoroughly as we go through um, some new material. So this is for day 10. It's titled Unusual Ways God Speaks, and it's part of section two, which is talking about a variety of ways that God can speak. As we all know, we have a very creative God, and he loves to engage with us in a variety of ways. And so it opens up in day 10. He references Acts 10, where Peter has a trance, and God gives him an open vision. In a previous day, the author had talked about dreams versus open visions versus closed visions. Um, open visions would be you're awake and you're alert and you see something in your visual perspective, whereas a closed vision might be something in your mind's eye, like in your imagination almost. So Peter is referenced in Acts 10.10 10 as actually having a trance, and God is giving him insight into the fact that the gospel is not just for Jews, but it's also for the Gentiles. And this is a big moment in, in the history of the church, and so God speaks very, very directly. But I wanted to touch on trances and meditation because there's worldly meditation, there's worldly um, induction of trances, and then there's what we would consider a biblical example of what it's meant to be. So worldly meditation is all about emptying your mind. Emptying your mind is a very dangerous thing because the enemy loves to take empty and unoccupied space and do all kinds of um, things with it we're meant to be filled. So we're meant to fill our minds with Jesus. So worldly meditation is emptying your mind or using things to induce some sort of experience or some sort of trance. That could be through psychedelics, witchcraft, Ouija boards, tarot cards, horoscopes, all those things that are, are counterfeits of true encounter with Jesus, true um, encounter with his spirit. So we don't, we don't partake in any sort of worldly meditation or induce worldly trances. What it looks like from a biblical standpoint, when we meditate on God's word or we meditate on Jesus, we're actually filling our mind. We're not emptying our mind. We're filling our mind with Jesus and his word. When it comes to a biblical example of a trance, it's not something we induce ourselves. We can desire deeper encounter with Jesus. We can de desire deeper intimacy with him, but it's not something that we use some sort of trigger for. Um, it's something that is triggered by Jesus, that that. God encounters us in a, in a more real or in a deeper way. And so we see this with Peter in Acts 10. All that to say, in this day, the author refers to a few different instances where we can encounter Jesus in deeper ways. One, he references Thomas. After Jesus died and resurrected, Thomas hadn't seen Jesus. He had heard accounts from other disciples about Jesus being alive. But he said, I will never believe until I put my hands in, or my until I touch his hands and his side where he was pierced. Um, now, that is stubbornness. He, he wasn't acting in faith, but Jesus meets him where he's at, and he comes and he reveals himself to Thomas, and Thomas does get to actually see his hands and put his hand in his side. And so, is, there, is Jesus gracious with us even when we're stubborn? Absolutely. He meets us where we're at. But Jesus does in that pa passage reference a missed blessing. So can we miss a blessing by being stubborn and not actually walking in faith? Yeah, that's true as well. Then he goes on to talk about Moses. And Moses was referenced as, as engaging with God in such a way that he, he spoke with God face to face as a man speaks with a friend. That's an amazing thing. That doesn't just happen overnight either. Moses was constantly seeking the Lord he was going after God's heart. He was going out of the camp to what was called the tent of meeting to seek the Lord's presence. And so is there a hunger and a pursuit of God that can lead us to deeper encounter like with Moses, speaking face to face with God like a friend? Absolutely. So could you have an encounter with God that's based on faith in pressing in? Absolutely. Could you have an encounter with God that's based on a lack of faith where, where he meets you where you're at? Absolutely. It's not necessarily one or the other. We want to walk in a way where we're allowing the Spirit in us to grow our faith so that we're not walking in a way that's stubborn like Thomas, but we're seeking God's face and seeking deeper encounter. He also references in this passage, in this uh, day of the book, that there are certain circumstances where God's grace is just 
thick because we're in way over our head, quite frankly. He talks about those seasons where there's just a lot at stake, and God is so faithful to meet us where we're at. I've had plenty of those in, in the transition to being the lead pastor and things that have gone on. God is so gracious to walk with us. There are times and seasons where he might walk or he might speak in a way that is very delicate and, and that still small voice, which is referenced in scripture. And there might be other times where just purely from his grace, stakes are high, you're in way over your head, and he might just really emphasize or confirm a word that he's speaking through a variety of means, which is, which is amazing when he does that as well. But we're always pressing in for more intimacy with the Lord. We're always learning to hear his voice. We never want the prime time, game time moment to be where we're practicing hearing God's voice and just banking on the fact that he's going to make it um, blatantly obvious. We want to be learning to hear his voice in the quiet place on a daily basis so that when we do get into places in life where we really need to discern and hear the Lord's voice, we've developed that intimacy with him so we're prepared in the moment. So I just wanted to touch on those things again that there's a difference between worldly meditation, worldly trances versus biblical meditation and biblical trances as referenced with Peter, um, that we're meant to be filled with Jesus. We're meant to be filled with his word. We don't look to the other counterfeits that the world looks to to try and um, experience something. And then in that process of going deeper with Jesus, we, wanna, we, we don't want to be stubborn. We don't want to have to see everything with our eyes like Thomas demanded. I've been there. There, In fact, when the prophetic was really new to me, I made an ultimatum to God. I said, God, you have to get someone to tell me what you've shown me in order for me to believe that you actually speak through people. And God met me in that. But, but there is a blessing when we walk in faith and we don't actually have to demand everything to be spelled out right in front of our eyes. That's the beauty of faith. But we always want to be people who are hungry and pursue the Lord just like Moses. I, know, I don't know about you, but I desire to to know God with an intimacy that I speak to him face to face like with a friend. That's what I desire and God is so gracious to walk with us through every season. So anyways, just a few things I wanted to touch on. That's day 10. Hope you're enjoying the book. Feel free to reach out if you have questions or things that um, are new or, or, or not making sense. We're always here to, to help guide people through the material. So hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.